Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome yourself to You Champion You, Who Are You? I'm your host, Chris Ferguson. It has always been a dream of mine to showcase ordinary people doing extraordinary things for themselves and for others. Those who have taken their dreams and ideas and then turn it into their reality. As they reach beyond their personal struggles, their personal pains, their traumas, their obstacles, the challenges, where many give up and a lot of people lose hope. There are those few who can walk through their ob obstacles and challenges, not knowing where it is, where it's going to take them. They just trust enough not to give up, to do the follow through in their personal life, their career, and in relationships. And this is what I call a champion in life. Today, I have an amazing man. He, he speaks by my spiritual love music that I call love my love music because it is all about love. But I'd like to welcome Joel Solomon to the podcast. Hi. Hi, Chris. So great to be here. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you. It's uh, both an honor and a pleasure. When we were talking before the podcast and I was like, gosh, he's, spe he's speaking my, my loves, my love messages. I don't get many people that can connect on my level. And so I am honored. I'm honored and I'm excited. But Joel, I always start people off with their backstory. Can we talk about yours? Absolutely. So first of all, I call myself a prosperity coach. So I'm teaching people how to change their mindset around money from, I can't afford that. Money doesn't grow on trees. That's too expensive to thoughts of abundance and prosperity. And once I've done that, I also teach them manifesting techniques. I have eight or nine different techniques that I've taught my clients and have worked for me. And But I say, you know, pick the ones that resonate most with them. And I also, what's different about me is I'm a former hedge fund manager. I used to be a professional money manager and I shut my fund down in order to do this. So I also teach people the processes, the techniques to invest their money once they've manifested it. But let's talk about most people ask me why did i shut down my fund you know it was a dream that i had in 1992 and it took me over 15 years to become a professional money manager now i help people live their dreams in a lot less time than 15 years <laughs> they learned from my long journey but you know obviously the joy is in the journey uh, it's a cliche, but it's absolutely true. So let's talk about why I shut down my hedge fund, because people will ask me, Joel, you were at the peak of money management. You had your own fund. This is something that people would love to have, love to raise money, love to manage other people's money. You were at the peak uh, of professional money management. And so what happened was I was at a prefer uh, personal development course and, and two things happened at that course that really changed my life. One was we were, we were, we had a guest speaker and this guest speaker spoke for an hour about stock options as the way to get rich. He said, you don't need much time. You don't need much money. This is how the rich people get rich. Options are essentially risk-free. And I was sick to my stomach. I had mm -hmm. people tapping me on the shoulder, whispering in my ear, Joel, does this make sense? Are <laughs> options really risk-free? So after he was done, we went outside of the auditorium. There were 200 people there. I said, look, uh, don't do this. He has no idea about your earnings or cash flow or tax status or risk tolerance, and most importantly about your belief that stock options are your way to become rich because everyone's on a different journey. Everyone's on a different path. Everyone has different beliefs. Now, the second thing that happened at that course was we were given a wooden board two inches thick. We were told we're going to break it with our bare hand. I don't know if you've done it or anyone's done it who's watching or listening. Yeah. Well, there was a lot of fear in that room. We had to literally fill out a permission slip listing next of kin actually just kidding on that part but we did have to fill out a permission <laughs> slip it was a lot of fear and the exercise was called obstacles or illusions mm -hmm. and on one side of the board we had to write our biggest obstacle 
on the other side of the board, we had to write our ultimate goal. Now that stumped me for a while. And then it finally hit me making everyone in this room financially free. Mm. I broke the board like the other 200 people did in that room. And I went home that night and I couldn't sleep. First, the guy was in my head. And I realized if I could ever get up the courage to speak in front of 200 people, see my biggest fear in life in December, 2015 was public speaking. If I could ever get up the courage to speak in front of 200 people, I could tell them the truth about money. I could be authentic, be of service and not lie to them. And then the other thing going on in my head was that wooden board, actually half the wooden board, making everyone in this room financially free. And then I think it hit me maybe 4, 4.30 in the morning. I jumped out of bed. I commuted into Manhattan. I was working at 54th and 6th Avenue at the time. I sent an email to my investors telling them I'm giving them their money back. I'm shutting down my fund. I figured out my true purpose. Ooh. My How lawyer wasn't too was happy. <laughs> Lori wasn't too happy with me. My colleagues were very upset, but I knew that my heart was no longer in professional money management. And I wanted to help large numbers of people become financially free. And I knew that that was truly what I was put on earth for here to do. It took me more than 50 years, but it's better late than never. Well, the thing is, is most people, my audience knows is that I did 40 years in law enforcement. And so the thing was, is I didn't have a voice. Right. When I retired last year, oh my gosh, it took me 50 days to create and understand and learn about podcasts and have my first recording July 7th of last year. So I'm coming on my one year anniversary. So I, like you, could, I didn't have a voice. I couldn't speak my opinion. I couldn't say what I wanted to do. But the, the thing that resonated with me is that I've always been a humanitarian all my life. I've always been, I got into law enforcement because of the underdogs that were giving the right, instead of just saying as a, as a law enforcement, oh, well, it's a civil issue and leave them with no hope. I couldn't do that. Right. And so the fact is, is that in that, I, I get it. I get about putting the time in. I get about doing the training. I get about doing everything else. But I, like you, have that attitude that I can do anything I choose. And that's what carried me through everything I did. So I understand when it came to, you know, that proverbial thinking outside the box, whoever said we had a box, it was doing a mind meld junk on people because that just created limiting beliefs more than it helped people get beyond it. Absolutely. Yeah. So can we talk about, you have kind of, um, I, I'm, I love books. And can we talk about your books? Let's go one by one. And then there's like five of them. And I've, I've got all the time in the world. Sure. So I, when I shut down my hedge fund, I realized I had already written a book effectively. Uh, Mindful Money Management was going to be a book that just combined all my investor letters that I had sent to my hedge fund investors over three plus years. And I had 300, I had 36 months, 10 pages a month, 360 pages, I was done. I figured I'd write a paragraph or a page in front of each month, which the, what I had been writing to my investors was about what was going on in the stock market and what was going on in financial stocks, which were the only stocks I was managing and maybe a highlight of a stock or an idea, or whatever. So, I put that together. I sent it to my closest friends and family and I got feedback. Joel, please don't share this one with anyone else. This is complete crap. <laughs> and that was my mom. <laughs> I love it. <Just> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but there was no good feedback. And I did get feedback from one best-selling author who told me, put the investor letters in the appendix or take them out. 
And I was like, that's the book, what? So I decided, she said, look, just sleep on this for three or four weeks, then come back to it. It's, it'll give you a new perspective. So I did, I came back in about a month and I looked at it and I said, she's right. She's the expert. She's a best-selling author. So I put the investor letters in the appendix. I had written a page, like I said, I needed, she told me minimum book uh, number of words is at least 45, 50,000. I had about 10,000 words. And so instead of writing a, just my investor letters, I decided to write a memoir about my experiences as a professional hedge, hedge fund or money manager and what I learned, what the obstacles I overcame, how I dealt with the adversity of losing money sometimes 10 days in a row, how I dealt with 2008 at Citigroup when I was managing money over $300 million, you know, and how I made money in 2008 and the lessons I learned from 2008 and 2009 when I made a ton of money. And so I put, it was basically a memoir. And after I put it out with a lot of hesitation, because I was saying things that a lot of people in the money management world were probably not going to agree with, I got some well, feedback. I was going to say, or were they afraid to get that out to the public that it didn't know? Yeah. I, I mean, one of the things I talked about was beliefs. Another was intuition. I talked about being grateful and giving. And so I, after I wrote the book, I got some feedback from a number of people who read the book saying, you should really put a lot of the key concepts of this book into another book and really enumerate the specific lessons learned. And that became the nine money rules millionaires use. So that's my second book. It became a bestseller in 2019. And I go through, as I already mentioned, a lot of what I, I really gave examples and uh, in as a money manager of how, for example, rule number one, when you believe, you know, how your belief systems really create your life and how it helped me or hurt me as a money manager. Now, the, rule number two is blasphemous to any financial advisor, <laughs> any money manager. It's called trust your intuition. Ooh. And no financial advisor is going to tell you to trust your intuition. But I will tell you, if I didn't trust it, I either lost money or I made less money. And, you know, they talk about women's intuition. It's really powerful if you can tap into it as a man. And I worked on tapping into my intuition every day and the insights and the, you know, we, we talk about the benefits of the universe of consciousness, right? And if you can tap into that consciousness all day, every day, then you'll, you're an enlightened soul. And so I worked on that as a money manager, believe it or not, while I had my own company managing money. And so I talk about with my clients now how to trust your intuition. I even had a woman in one of my courses a couple of years ago who I was talking about in the course about an example of a stock. And she told me that she was going to try to use rule number two. And I'm like, great, use it, not try, just use it. And for some reason, she's all just like you, Chris, she's all about love right? And then the heart. And, and so she literally researched, went to see if there was any stock tickers with, with love. And she found the stock symbol LUV. And she's like, oh my God, that that's going to work. I know I'm going to make money. And she, she made 50% in two years by investing in LUV, which actually is Southwest Airlines. Now, I'm not making any stock recommendations and full disclosure, yeah. no disclaimers, you know, do your own research, use my five-step proprietary stock screen and so on. But she used her intuition. And I will tell you that trusting your intuition is really powerful. So in the nine money rules, we have two different parts of the book. The first part is what I call the spiritual rules, belief, intuition, visualization, can happiness buy you money? 
Not can ha- money buy you happiness. Can happiness buy you money? Yes. Rule number five is being grateful. And rule number six is given. And the second part of the book is more process oriented or conventional or unconventional. I, the subtitle of the book is only the unconventional ones. And so rule number seven is budgeting or where's my cash going? Rule number eight is DIY investing. Do it yourself. Cause I truly believe that people can become rich by doing it themselves. And I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I give my five-step proprietary stock screen in the book. And rule number nine, maybe the most controversial of the whole book for any professional money manager, for even any individual person, it's don't diversify. So John Kenneth Galbraith in the 1920s, the most famous economist said, put all your eggs in one basket and watch them closely. He didn't say, put all your eggs, put many eggs in many different baskets. (laughs) And you may have heard of Warren Buffett. Warren Mm -hmm. is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. He's worth $150 billion, more than $150 billion. He said if he could, he would put more than 50% of his net worth in one stock. Mm -hmm. And his right-hand man, Charlie Munger, who's chairman of Berkshire Hathaway and as of today, 98 years old, he, and he's worth over $10 billion. His quote is, if you know nothing, diversify. So, and I personally found as a professional money manager that my top three, four, five ideas made me 120% of the return for the year. And then the other 50, 60, 70 ideas on average lost me money. Mm. So, don't diversify. So that that's uh, the nine money rules millionaires use in a nutshell. We can go into any of the rules in more detail. My my last book, Infinite Love and Money with Molly Singh, I wrote this book with her to end divorce caused by money. So I had an epiphany while I was finishing up my second book while I was coaching one of my clients, uh, just him. I was work, I was helping him to get his dream job. And we were working on his mindset because he had a very negative mindset. He didn't believe that he could live his dream life. And because people had doubted him and most people have these issues, I had these issues. That's why it took me 15 years (laughs) to become a professional money manager. I had a lot of doubt and we can go into that in a second. So I was helping him get his dream job. And we started on a tangent into his money issues and why his cash flow is negative. And I started helping him then. I said, you know, we should, your wife needs to get involved at this point. We're talking about cash flow. She's involved. You know, it's, you know, you're a partnership. And he said, Joel, no, she doesn't, she doesn't need to know anything about money. You know, I control all of that. And I said, this is not, this is not good. This is not a healthy long-term relationship. If you can't discuss and be open about all aspects of money with your partner. And I was jogging the next day and I was like, oh my God, this book needs to be written. So I reached out to another infinite possibilities trainer. I'm a certified infinite possibilities trainer through Mike Dooley. And I knew this woman, Molly Singh was a relationship coach. I said, can we write a book together? She said, absolutely. So that became infinite love and money. And uh, that came out last year. I'm really grateful that became a bestseller in, in personal money management. And I did, uh, I did contribute to a book uh, that came out uh, just in June, uh, 2022 called stories of passion from around the world. And I, I contributed one of my, uh, I opened the kimono a little bit and, and talked, uh, very vulnerably about how I had to take a job three years ago because my business had, had, had stagnated and I needed to generate some current income. And it's a, it's a compendium book about uh, 50 or 60 amazing people from around the globe who, have, who are very successful and uh, telling their own stories. A lot, of that, a lot of the stories are what we're talking about here today about beliefs and intuition and how successful people use those, those grounding techniques to be successful. 
And it's important. I, I, I think the title of my section was called uh, Money Flows When You Allow when when you when you allow it when you allow yourself to let go. So letting go yeah, and surrendering. We call that surrendering. Yes, and, and actually the surrender experiment is a book I read in 2019 by Michael Singer. He also wrote The Untethered Soul, mm -hmm. which is a classic. And you know, everyone who's into metaphysical stuff and spirituality have read The Untethered Soul. But I actually like the surrender experiment better because it's very it's process oriented. It's telling you just let go. You know, when when you're when you resist and you white knuckle it, you know, <laughs> that's not how life works. It's actually letting go is when you create abundance and prosperity. I I love that. I, and yes, and and there's a lot of addiction um, groups that are using the untethered soul to help people understand what what why they had those triggers that they need to have those addictions. Yeah. And so I, I absolutely, I, I recommend that book it, to all my, all my readers, my listeners, my clients. And it has been, I've dealt with a lot of military that has PTSD and it is amazing as far as ad addressing that. So <clears throat> I, I love that you brought it up, but what, now that you have the books, what workshops are you doing? Yeah, so I actually partnered with another Infinite Possibilities trainer. So Infinite Possibilities is a best-selling book that Mike Dooley wrote over 20 years ago. And we're certified to teach the main concepts from that book. And so I partnered with this woman who asked me after the Nine Money Rules came out in 2019, so what are you going to do now with it? And I said, what do you mean? And she said, Joel, like this is perfect for a workshop, perfect for a retreat, perfect for seminars. So she helped me come up with a nine week program uh, called Infinite Peace and Prosperity. And so I do that worksheet shop with her. And her name is Charit Rodriguez. She's a, I call her a mystical, magical meditation teacher She's also a best-selling author of two amazing poem books uh, called Love and Breathe. And so she starts out each week with a centering, a meditation that I say it's channeled. It's, it's really amazing. It, somehow she brings in the key concepts for that money rule that week. And it's a, you know, whatever, 5, 10, 15 minute uh, meditation centering and then I teach one one of the nine money rules and so we so that's one of the things uh, we we do we're actually doing a retreat uh, based you know for probably a half a day uh, in in uh, either late October early November we don't have a specific date or place yet based you know so we'll condense a lot of the concepts that we teach over those nine to ten hours into a, a, a short shorter day but again the goal and all my goals are to help people become financially free. So everything aligns with that. Every workshop, every coaching I do. Um, but I, I, I recently did a workshop called How to Shift Your Money Mindset. And, and that's available on my website away as well. It's free. That one's free. And again, the goal is to get people to financial freedom as quickly as possible. So those are the workshops. But I also have a membership where I teach take people from wherever they are right now towards financial freedom as quickly as possible. It's a six month membership, uh, but the content is continuing to grow and expand. We, in fact, we just included the whole infinite possibilities course. It's a um, probably six plus hours I added into the membership. So I have guest experts who are infinite possibilities uh, trainers who added their content and we have mindset experts uh, we have uh, anything related to abundance and prosperity. So people help. I have a, a woman who does, uh, who's a hypnotist. And she added her hypnosis for uh, abundance into the membership. So the goal is to, you know, and I have in the membership, I have all the, of the nine money rules recorded. 
uh, different stories about clients, about my life. We have meta, meta, uh, manifestation techniques in the membership. And then I even have recorded videos on how to get comfortable investing in stocks 101. I have how to get comfortable investing in real estate 101. So basic, very starter programs so that people, you know, because a lot of my clients have said to me, I know nothing, you know, and, and again, it's a limiting belief, right? Actually, you have, um, I believe we've had many lifetimes, you've had some experience with property in, mm -hmm. in, your, in your soul, right? Mm -hmm. And you've had some experience with business through, through your soul sometimes. So, and stocks are just investing in businesses. So anyway, the point being that overcoming the limiting beliefs is key. You know, you don't need to have a PhD in math or finance and, it, or a master's, believe it or not. I, I still don't have a master's in finance. Uh, I never got one. There's hope for me then because math is my Absolutely. subject. So and, and again, you don't have to be great in math. You can use your intuition. Yeah. People say people say to me, I need to be good in numbers. And in the nine money rules, this is a quote from the nine money rules millionaires use. If you can have a fifth grade education, if you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide, you're good. That's all you need. And you have <laughs> if you have a calculator, which is on your phone these days, you're good. So uh, when you said that, I'm like, okay, I I have hope now. I have hope with this because, you know, I, I math was not my favorite. Well, it was it was uh, through middle school. I was doing algebra, second, uh, first and second algebra, which is high school stuff in middle school oh. or junior high is what we called it. Yeah. But I moved to um, high school and they put me in a general math class after taking algebra one and two, and I'm like. And so I went to my guidance counselor and she said, um, well, we don't have a place to put you. So this is where we put you. So if you have a problem, send your parents. And I looked at her and I don't know if you know, but I was an orphan at eight years old, myself and my brother, five brothers and sisters. And I looked at her and I cursed her out as a street kid. And I said, you know, I don't have an effing parent to come do this. And so I went back to teacher said, give me your exam your yearly exam. And he said, why? And I said, I want to take the test. He says, what were you doing then? And I told him, he goes, what are you doing in this? I said, I don't have a parent to be able to get me out of it. So mm -hmm. give me your exam because I don't intend to come to this class. And at that point it was like, I was done with math. Mm. And so a, a teacher can be a, a critical point in a, a child's yeah. life. And most people don't realize how critical. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So in that, it was like I, I, I. This is why I love showcasing other people because they, the messages are getting out. There's so much junk on the news today, but let's talk about the positive things people are doing for other people. And let's face it, there are people don't realize that money is a tool. Yes. They don't have that mindset. And, and when they have scarcity to it because of what their child, childhood was or their limiting beliefs or what their family traditions are, how many kids back in my day, the parents says, don't go to go in the military because you, you're not college material. Yeah, a lot of it, you know, your limiting beliefs are generated from age zero to eight or 10. And, you know, we, we spend the rest of our lives undoing those limiting beliefs. And, and look, you know, I, I, I don't blame anybody for my life. I take full responsibility for my life. And I, I teach my clients that you need to take full responsibility for your life and your thoughts become things and your beliefs are just your thoughts you've thought over and over again. Having said that, we spend a lot of time with people, friends, family, you know, there are, you know, People, you teachers, um, who who said things to you when you were young and impressionable, who and and made you believe them, or you decided to believe them, and so retraining your brain and and shifting those grooves that are really deep grooves in your brain to new grooves, it, it takes some time. Somebody asked me yesterday. Uh, I gave a presentation to the Small Business uh, Development Corporation in uh, Farmingdale, Long Island. 
And somebody asked me, so how long does it take? You know, you're working on changing people's grooves that are really deep and you're shifting these limiting beliefs to empowering belief. How long does it take to, the, to make this transition? And I said, it depends because some of them are really, really deep and some not so deep. And so some, you know, sometimes I do one-on-one -on -one coaching that's six months and we have major shifts and, and they're good to go. And I've had other people who have been clients for years and it's still, you know, there's a work in progress. And, and, and look, I, I think we're all in a work in progress, but significant changes can happen in a short period of time when you're working with a coach one-on-one, -on -one, if you're going through a membership and you're getting, you know, this, you're changing brain synapses is what you're doing. The brain is elastic. And if you're watching videos of the Money Miracles membership, instead of binging on Netflix, you're doing good for yourself, not bad. And I, I tell my clients, uh, this is me and different. Yeah, I should have said this at the beginning of the podcast. I say it with my clients, whatever doesn't resonate, don't, you know, throw it out. I'm here to help. Right. So for me, I've limited the amount of news that, that I take in on any day. And <laughs> I've been doing this since 2012. It's been 10 years. I read a book called how to be wildly wealthy fast and mm -hmm. Sandy forced to recommend trying it for a day to eliminate TV news, radio, and newspapers. And I did that for a day and I did it for a week and I've not looked back. And people, we, I used to, when I had my hedge fund, we had these glass doors and glass windows. So I was in what they called the hedge fund hotel. They were like 30 different businesses on one floor and four different floors in this building in Manhattan. And we had a TV, everyone had a TV because you're supposed to watch CNBC in the morning, you know, the business news channel. And, but I could actually change the channel I found. And so <laughs> when I got in, I watched Curious George. I love that. I, so love I was that. literally, people were like walking by. He's like, what, what is he doing? I like, I'm, I'm sh shifting my vibe. I'm raising my vibe because CNBC is lowering my vibration and I yeah. want to raise my vibration. So I watch cartoons in the morning. Well, let me tell you, um, um, being a shamanic practitioner, it helped me get out of my grooves. I don't know the word no. I don't know or respond to I can't. Or if someone says you can't do that, I'm not going to boast about it, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it my way, the way I feel, the way it resonates with me. And that's what I have led my life with since I was eight years old. And so, yeah, I read, um, sorry to interrupt, uh, Chris, but there was somebody who recommended this and I recommend it to anybody I'm helping get a job. It's not my core thing I do, but if they want a dream job, I'll help them do that. So go to a spreadsheet and write down the numbers one to a hundred next to one to 99, write no and write at a hundred. Yes. And every time you get a no, cross it off. You're one step closer to the yes. And I'm, I don't know anybody who I've worked with who's got 99 no's. You know, they usually get the new job before, you know, the hundredth. And so there, it's a positive way of thinking. Okay. Every time I get a no, I'm one step closer to the yes. Well, I use boundary exercises instead of the, the no's. And that's where you, on a sheet, you make, I make my clients put it like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. And in the center, re, put a big circle. And you can do this for personally, you can do it for professionally, you can do it for relationships. And in the inside, you want from yourself all the things about this. And on the outside is what you will not accept, the settling, the judging, the belittling, the abuses, the, the you know, the, the knee-jerk reactions. And it's funny that you said Southwest Airlines because a lady that I had had, she had cancer. She um, is remission. She's in great shape. Her children are grown. And she says, I want to be an airline stewardess. And I said, okay, let's do a boundary exercise. And this is for business. And she, I says, which airlines do you want to work? And she goes, I don't know. I said, okay, let me think. Uh, put Southwest in there. And I said, I need you to read this every day, all day long. And within two and a half months, she applied, she was 
working for Southwest, went to their training and she's with them still as a stewardess. But it was the fact that it's pen to paper, it's you to you, and you're all in for this. Absolutely. That it's actually interesting. So you're what you were doing was you were teaching a manifestation technique, which is one of the nine that I teach in my membership. And that one actually is the most powerful. But when I when I teach affirmations uh, within the manifestation techniques, there's two things that's really important. When you write an affirmation, it's belief and desire. So she really wanted to be a flight attendant. So her desire level, if you asked her from one to 10, where 10 is a burning desire and one is, eh, it doesn't really matter. She was probably like a nine or a 10. And you got her belief level up, right? So belief from one to 10, 10 is, is like absolute faith. I know it's gonna happen. And one is massive doubt. There's no way it's gonna happen. So what I teach is that if you're not a seven, eight, nine or 10 or belief, and a seven, eight, nine, or 10 of desire, forget about it. So you write down affirmations first, and then you write down your belief level and desire level next to them from one to 10. And then you cross off the dreams and desires that are not, you know, eight, nine, or 10, and start with the ones that have the highest belief and highest desire level, because those are gonna come the quickest. I agree. And and see that, but this is the thing is, I love, these are our, our commonalities that we do. And I've never met you or, or beyond this or had this conversation, but it works. And I call this the, it's scientific, it's quantum physics when you think about it. Yeah. Because if I say to you, Joel, Joel, you said that, you know, you're, you're doubting yourself. So I'm going to give you this red pill. And this belief is going to be that you can do anything you choose to do. And you take that pill and you believe it and you don't know that it wasn't a sugar pill. You don't have any idea, but it happens. And, and all of a sudden you're, you're accomplishing your goals. You're, you're having this self-confidence in yourself because I now have put in your belief systems that, you know what, Joel, you can do anything. Absolutely. I, I say hashtag doubt the doubt. Hashtag doubt the doubt. Have faith in your dreams and desires as opposed to having faith in your doubt. And most people, like I did, you know, when I asked around in 1992, 1993, how do I become a professional money manager? Everyone I talked to said, Joel, forget it. Like, you're an actuary. You're working at an insurance company. You're doing computer programming. You, you're you're a behind-the-scenes guy. You know, you can't you can't be a professional money manager. And finally, I found somebody who told me the route he took. And so I took his route kind of, and it took me a while because I had that doubt mm -hmm. in my head from everybody who I talked to, say, and including my parents who said, you can't do this. Like, just stick with what you're doing. Like I was, you know, I talked to actuaries and the actuary was the number one job in the country in 1992. It was on the cover of Forbes magazine mm -hmm. as the number one job in the United States. And I was making $110,000 at 27 years old, which is over $400,000 in today's dollars. Yes. So people said, Joel, you, you have a great job. You already passed all the exams. I had to go through 10 exams. I passed them all, all this stuff. But I said, no, I have a dream. And I'm not giving up on this dream because I both, I thought at the time that my, my life purpose was professional money manager. So I've actually had two dreams achieved in this lifetime, which is pretty cool. Well, how about you have found your purpose and then amplified it? Yes. Yes. And, and, and then say, be a service to others. And that, that is the key because in, in the workshops you do and everything else, I love the fact that you volunteer for kids because I'm all about kids. Yeah, actually, thanks for introducing that, Chris, because I am really excited because in June of 2022, my charity was approved, Solomon Charitable Giving, and it was approved by the IRS and state of New York. And so I can now donate money as well as my time. And the reason I created this charity was to help children in the US and around the globe become financially literate and financially free. And I truly believe the US and other countries would not have the problems they have right now, if we were taught the truth about money, 
growing up. You know, we're, we're not taught beliefs. We're not taught intuition. We're not taught don't diversify. We're not taught that we can do it ourselves. And I went, you know, the first interaction I had with kids um, was in the Boys and Girls Club in Stanford, Connecticut. And I taught there for about nine months, first group, and then another four months, the second group. And it was so exciting to see them get interested in being an entrepreneur, get interested in how to invest in a business or start a business or interested in real estate. You know, they, they, they just sucked it all up. They were really interested. And that's what's exciting because when you're 14, 15, 16, you know, you're still malleable. You're just more malleable, much more malleable than you are at 50. And so teaching the kids financial literacy is great. I also taught the Girl Scouts in 2019. Uh, they invited me to speak at a conference in Connecticut. And I guess I did good enough. They asked me to speak again this year. And so I went back uh, in 2022 to speak to 16 Girl Scouts about the truth about money, about beliefs and intuition and go through the nine money rules. So I, I really want to expand that uh, part of my business dramatically and, and, and teach others the truth so that they can, you know, be part of my leverage, that part of the business so we can get the truth out there. And because it's not being taught in schools, it's not being taught after school. And it's, it, I believe this is the most communication and money are the two most important things that are, that are just completely missed out uh, in school. I agree. Um, here in Tennessee, one, I, and this is, I was in the school system as a, uh, with the school board police in an alternative high school. So that was a whole different thing, but it wasn't taught. But here in Tennessee, at the school that I was at, or it's just the, the, the program, they do, Dave Ramsey's School of, of, of Finance, they use it. It's a, it's a prerequisite for graduation to mm. have go through that. And that's teaching them about checkbooks. That's teaching about budgets. That's teaching about threads. But I've never seen that in any school I've ever been prior to here. Right. And so the fact is, is it was like, I, I in what you're saying, I'm validating that some states are saying yes, but here in Tennessee, you can't you can't quit school till you're 18. And when I saw a principal said, uh, we need to go to this kid's house, he's not showing up for school, like he's gonna be graduating uh, and he's gonna be the first kid in his family gra that graduates. We need to figure out a way to get him to and from school every day, feed mm -hmm. him, have yeah. him have, you know, we they were sending food home because of, of what was going on but this was his core value that there's no child child left behind absolutely that's great it's good to see that there are some changes coming i think the biggest issue though is still the mindset and the money mindset piece is i think what you know you can teach the practical aspects and this is what i teach my clients and i i literally have people come to me and say joel i want to learn everything you know about stocks and I'll say, great, but you need the foundational principles first. And I will, will, won't teach people about stocks until I teach them about beliefs and intuition and giving and gratitude and happiness and, and visualizing. Because if you're not visualizing your dream life, if you're not daydreaming on purpose for at least five minutes a day, you know, you, you are, were effectively doing that with that woman, right? You, you were putting her in the position so she could be a flight attendant. And so that's what I teach. If, unless you're, you learn these foundational principles, you're going to be buying when you should be selling and selling when you should be buying. So it, it, it's critical to have both, I believe. And that's why I teach both. And, and by the way, uh, another really important part of what I teach is acting as if. Acting as if what you want to happen has already happened. So, and it doesn't mean you have to spend money. If you want your dream car, it's a blue convertible Maserati Gran Turismo that goes from zero to 60 in three seconds and has semi-autonomous driving and is 454 V8 engine, then go test drive it. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to have the money right now mm -hmm. to go buy it, but you can test drive it. Or if you are thinking about, you know, that 10 bedroom, six bath, you know, 
house mansion with the indoor outdoor pool and jacuzzi inside and outside and the you know massive kitchen and and so on and so forth with tennis courts and bowling alley and movie theater then go to um a quote unquote rich neighborhood and and ask a realtor to take you around and mm -hmm. they will and mm -hmm. just and take pictures and put it on a vision board so i'm going to ask the listeners and viewers to act as if right now um because i'm going to give away this is rule number six i'd like to give uh, I'm going to give away a, a special report called The Five Mistakes New Millionaires Make. So act as if you're a millionaire and get this re special report, The Five Mistakes New Millionaires Make. You can text to the number 66866-NMR for nine money rules. NMR for nine money rules. Text to the number 66866-NMR and it'll ask for your email and you'll get this free white paper and you'll get free emails, videos on money tips as long as you want. You can unsubscribe if you don't want, but uh, I give a free video money tip every week as well. So that's 66866 M N and like Mary Nora. So, so it's the name of my second book, nine money rules. So N M R nine money rules. Perfect. Let's talk about your TV experiences, uh, appearances. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was on CEO Money. We we talked uh, a few years ago about the main concepts and the nine money rules. That was a interesting conversation because it was a very conventional show, and mm -hmm. uh, the guy really pushed me hard on not diversifying and push me hard on doing it yourself. And he, um, it, it was fine. You know, I, like I said, if it doesn't resonate with viewers or listeners, we move on. Um, I, I was also on a, a show called Behind, Between the Covers. Between the Covers uh, is a, actually a book show. So there's a woman who is on Long Island and she has a TV show uh, that she does just about authors. And so it was really awesome to be with some fictional authors and they were talking about, you know, their amazing fiction books that they've written. This one guy also wrote a book about Manhattan. And so we had an interesting conversation about Manhattan and his experiences through Manhattan. So uh, those were the two. I've also been on radio shows. I, I was on Bloomberg Radio when I was a professional money manager they interviewed me and, and what was really exciting is I was supposed to be on for a 20 minute segment. They had me on for three segments because I was so interested and I, I really was, I think, engaging when I talked about my stocks. And, and so I had three stock ideas that I was, I had just really excited about. I, I knew they were undervalued and the reason why I'm so excited is because I want to help as many people as possible. And if, if my conviction in those ideas, if I could transfer my belief to other people so that they could believe and they could believe what I believe, which is that these stocks can help them become rich, then it I was all for it. So that was, that was a fun, uh, that, and, and the, the synchronicities I've had in my life, I know Chris, you've had many, so I'll just tell you a quick story how I got on Bloomberg radio. So I was, there was one particular night, I was supposed to be down in Atlantic City the next morning to meet with investors. And I had to make a decision, should I go to this Bloomberg networking event where I get to meet some potential investors, but I didn't know how many, I didn't know if it was, but for some reason, my intuition was really driving me, Joel, you gotta go. It, you know, even if it takes you four or five hours to get to Atlantic City, because you're driving in rush hour traffic, just get to this Bloomberg. And I went and I and the cocktail party was supposed to start at seven and the content was not great. And so I walked out of the last speaker to get into the cocktail area early, like 10 to seven. And then at 7.20, I'm like, you know, you gotta get going. This, it just wasn't work. like, why did you come? I don't even know why you come, came. And then I got into the elevator and who walks into the elevator but Pim Fox. And Pim 
was the guy on Bloomberg Radio. And I was like, oh my God, oh my God. So I, I was like, I'm very shy. I said, hey, Pim. And he said, hey, he smiled at me. And then I walked out of the elevator. He walked right, I walked left. And I'm like, no, that's not right. And I got outside and he was standing right on the same corner. And I was walking back to my office at 54th and 6th. I said, hey, Pim, where are you walking to? He said, 54th and 5th, uh, where I live. And I said, oh, cool. Um, you want to walk together? He said, sure. We got talking and he said, hey, you ever want to be on the radio? I said, yes, please. <laughs> so you can't, you can't plan these things. I, I say there's so many synchronicities in life. It's just you, you can't plan your life. And that, that was one of me, so many synchronicities I've had in the last 10 years. I, I, I agree. agree. Um, synchronicities, when you pay attention and you listen to your intuition, yeah. will guide you to your perfect life. With, with all the TV appearance and the things that you've done in your, in your, in your career, what are you most proud of? I am most proud of being a dad. Nah. I have two amazing daughters, Lauren and Morgan. They're 18 and 16 now. And um, they have taught me unconditional love, uh, which I didn't know before I had children, uh, honestly. And so they've taught me that. They, Lauren's in a, going into Syracuse University in a couple of weeks. And uh, she is, is an amazing singer and actor and human being, caring, thoughtful woman. I have to say woman now because she's 18. And my other daughter, Morgan, is also really caring and thoughtful and beautiful. And she, I believe she's going to be a doctor someday. And she's a great athlete as well. I, I, I didn't, we didn't add that, but it was like, this is, this is, this is the core of you is your family. Yeah. And the fact is, is that's what motivates you to be better for them. Yeah. And, and I didn't mention my name, my, the name of my company is called Sa Lore More. Uh, it's named after my daughters, Lauren and Morgan. So it's S-A for the first two letters of my last name, L-A-U-R for Lauren, M-O-R for Morgan. It's also my website. I, I, I love that. I love that. Okay. Three tips that you can give my listeners that can help them today so one we've already mentioned is hashtag doubt the doubt you know have faith in your dreams and desires stop, stop doubting yourself i for many years i doubted myself and i, I know it comes up but you, you know you can so that that's number one the second thing is affirmations we've also talked about it here's a great tip to say affirmations out loud with emotion in the past or present tense so I am financially free, not I am going to be financially free, <laughs> right? I, Joel Solomon, am a money magnet. Put your name in it with emotion. I, Joel Solomon, am a money magnet. You know, so, so say it out loud with emotion, with your name in it in the past tense. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, believe it and have a burning desire for it. So I that, love that. And I didn't mean to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> so three, I think when the most important part of manifesting is feeling first, manifestation second. So you have to feel the feeling of what you want to happen before it's happened. And I know people say, well, how do I do that? Well, it's, it's, it, it may take some work, right? You have to, you know, imagine, do the visualization, close your eyes and feel you know, think, I would say, think about a time in your life that you were ecstatic, you know, like so happy. Like I go back to the birth of my daughters, right? And that, that moment of, oh my God, like it's the miracle, it's a miracle. You know, how did this one cell become this person, right? <laughs> and I still don't understand it, right? We, I don't think we will ever understand how that happens, but, you know, so that is really, really, really important. You know, like when, when you understand feeling first, like get that feeling of that miracle of that great event. And if you could feel that feeling, then the man and, and, and apply it to the manifestation that you want, the manifestation comes quickly. 
And and that is it. That is truly, truly it. But I was laughing when you were describing this Maserati because on my vision board, you can't see this. I have a Maserati coupe convertible pearl in color because okay. it, it with with a uh, uh, base seats. But the fact is, is so, you know, I've driven one and I was lucky enough in law enforcement that I, I, I could drive fast, but now I can't. So it was like, I got to, you know, it's not that I didn't obey the law. It's just like, you know, going code three was different. And I always told my supervisor, thank you for letting me go fast because I, you know what? I'm really good at that. And they <laughs> laugh at me, but uh, it's, it, it's interesting. That's, that is what's on my, my uh, vision board. So I just figured I'd share that with you for awesome. your intuition, because I don't think you realized that that's what you were channeling it. So, but this, I ask this of everybody that um, I interview is to sit back, close your eyes, take a deep breath in and connect with their five-year-old inner child. And what would they say of you today about how far you've come? I am very proud of you. You've done a great job. Keep going. You got more to do. Yeah. And they said, and, but he also said you had the cojones to step out when everybody told you not to step out and, and, and to follow your purpose and your passion. And most people don't do that. They, those become their regrets in life. Yes. And Joel, what regrets do you have by following your passion and your purpose? None. You know, <laughs> I, I, you know for me, it's uh, and it's it's ongoing. You know, I I have a true dream to help at least a hundred thousand people become financially free. That's my true dream, and my co-facilitator Chara says up the number, but let's get to a hundred thousand first, and then we'll up the number because I believe in it. For I believe in a hundred thousand right now. I'm not sure if I believe in a million or a billion yet, but uh, let's start with a hundred thousand and that would be let's go fun. big. Like you know what? Let's let's go big and just put it out there and say this is this is the goal. This is the goal. Well, I, I say at least. So to me, that whenever you're putting out a goal, you know, put out a number, but say at least. You know, my my business is generating over a million dollars of positive net cash flow every year, right? You know, say at least or over. So that way you're not limiting yourself. And I wanted to share with you, when you say, um, what, um, quote me here or, or help me here, is when you talk about people that are manifestation to think as if it, it is, I tell my clients is, wouldn't it be nice? Mm. And wouldn't so in the same thing, when, when, you know, what you said, I do, because it's like, wouldn't it be nice that I fulfill my dreams as being a stewardess. Wouldn't it be nice to have whatever? Wouldn't it be nice to feel that? Because you're feeling that emotion. And when you think of it, you're you're feeling that emotion and you're thinking about it at the same time. So I, I we have, again, a lot of similarities about what we do. And I I had not heard of the, in, in, um, what is that? The, uh, uh, the program that you took or you teach oh, infinite possibilities infinite possibilities i couldn't yeah, read my, my own, my own handwriting. Yeah, so synchronicity right because you have an infinite symbol on your shirt and that i think that's the symbol of your your business too so that infinity and the heart and then of course um you know on infinite love of money i don't know if you guys can see it pull but, it back uh, just a little bit because it's not focused uh, uh, a little bit forward Yes. You're getting there. Yeah. Okay. It, so whatever. So there's an infinity sign on the infinite love and money book. It's called infinite love and money and there's hearts and dollar signs. So pretty cool. So it's, there was a lot of synchronicity and, and Joel didn't know this and I didn't know this of Joel, but this is the way the universe works. And so Joel, I'm honored. I am pleasure. I, I, it's been my pleasure to have you here today. And if you have a one sheet, could you email me that? Sure. Yeah. So that I, um, when this comes out and when your th things that are going on, because when I put this out, I'm going to, let me, let me do my closing and then we'll talk real quick. 
I'm going to pull you out here. Hang on a second. Oh, it takes a special kind of individual to dream their dreams, their thoughts and ideas and turn it into their reality. When the world says no, Joel said yes. Joel Solomon, he stayed and stepped past the fears. He stayed the course and he had the courage to do the follow through to the end. George Solomon, you've championed yourself. Now we, have, now we know who you become. Thank you for sharing your ideas, your thoughts and dreams with us. It is my wish, wouldn't it be nice that all my listeners would contact you and get the information and the education of money and infinite love.